Hi guys, Amores here. Today we are uh, checking out a rare 3D video card and a MPEG-2 hardware decoder introduced in uh, 1997 by Chromatic Research. This card is powered by the MPEG-2 chip. The original MPEG chip was quite unusual in the world of computer video cards, simply because it was uh, basically a multi-purpose DSP, which stands for a Digital Signal Processor, and uh, there was no specialized 3D hardware to deal with uh, triangles and uh, texturing. Everything was based on the pure processing power of the MPEG DSP chip, the high bandwidth of the RDRAM or Rambus memory, and uh, lots of low-level software uh, engineering uh, magic. Well, as you would expect from a DSP chip, even a very powerful one, the 3D performance just wasn't there. Impact 2 chip released just one year later improved the original design by adding a 3D pipeline specialized in rasterizing triangles and texturing them. Even so, there was still nothing very fancy on the 3D side. However, by using a uh, 35 uh, nanometer technology, the Impact 2 had a uh, doubled clock speed and basically the raw processing power was uh, doubled as well. I mentioned earlier that uh, this is a rare 3D video card. Well, uh, how rare can it be? Well, let's say that the only reference of this exact model that I have appears on a uh, Polish website and the only pictures You'll find online is taken by me a while ago while I was doing some research on this card. Otherwise, nothing is showing up on a Google search. Before doing some benchmarks, let me present you our test system powered by Pentium 2 350 running on a Soyo SI6BE motherboard. Both the CPU and the motherboard were launched in uh, 1998 and this is the kind of hardware that had at least a slight chance to be matched with a brand new Impact 2 card while uh, they were uh, still on the market. By the way, uh, this card was uh, manufactured by Atrend in the summer of 1998 and just a, a few months later Chromatic Research was uh, acquired by uh, ATI Technologies and all driver support was terminated. However, these uh, versatile chips ended up in other multimedia products. Not everything is from 1998 in our test system. I do like to use SSDs on older systems uh, just to see how snappy they can get. So I used a Samsung SATA 3 SSD with uh, Windows 95 on it. <laughs> This is actually the exact Windows 95 installation that runs also on modern uh, hardware with an uh, Intel 13th gen CPU. But now, after Windows is done with uh, discovering uh, new hardware, once again, it will get along with a uh, Pentium 2 and an uh, AGP motherboard as well. And now we are uh, in Windows 95 with Impact 2 drivers installed. We are Almost ready to benchmark this card, almost because we need some reference. Even if this card was on the market in 1998, the Impact 2 chip was announced in late 1996. So I guess it's fair to be matched with uh, chips uh, released in uh, 1996, 1997. And uh, this article from Anantech uh, from December 1997 is quite handy. So, in the newly released and also very demanding Quake 2 FPS, one of the worst performing cards in OpenGL was the Creative Labs GB Extreme PCI card, which used a uh, Permedia 2 chip. Well, let's see, can we get at least 15 FPS with our Impact 2 PCI card? First of all, can uh, we even run Quake 2 on this card since it's compatible with only uh, Direct3D API from Microsoft? 
Yes, we can. Chromatic Research was kind enough to make a directory D to OpenGL wrapper that works only with ID software titles like Quake and Hexen. So basically, Quake 2 runs through emulated OpenGL, which relies on a software directory D. Sounds great. The image quality is decent at uh, 640 by 480 and we get, yes, 13 FPS. Not great, not that uh, terrible either, considering how the OpenGL rendering is uh, performed. And speaking of image quality, at uh, 400 by 300 we get 21.5 uh, uh, FPS, and this uh, resolution wouldn't have looked that bad on a 14-inch uh, uh, CRT. How do I know? Well, uh, this is exactly how I played Quake 2 in uh, 1998. We can get even more FPS by further degrading image quality. Impacto has a uh, directory D fidelity versus performance slider, and if we go with uh, maximum performance, we do get more FPS, but the image quality gets absolutely terrible. I'm not sure. I guess we got this time 24.6 FPS or something like that. Now let's see some MDK action. This is a uh, hot title from 1997, which is uh, directory decompatible, so it should run and look uh, just fine on this impact uh, two card. Let's see. <coughs> In the end, the impact chip, I guess it was an interesting concept, but it uh, turned out that the complexity of 3D games must be matched with uh, specialized 3D hardware. By late uh, 1997, 3DFX Voodoo 2 was offering a 60 FPS uh, gaming experience. So the original business strategy of uh, Chromatic Research to have a competitive 3D card under $200 price tag by using a multi-purpose DSP chip simply failed. On the other hand, ATI Technologies had the right products on the right time, so they acquired the struggling chromatic research for $67 million in stock. End of story. By the way, this is Half-Life in a direct 3D rendering. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video.